This question asks us to consider the Earth as some kind of capacitor. A little bit strange, but the first thing to notice is the situation we're describing here is not a parallel plate capacitor. So, what you know as the thing that determines capacitance cannot be used. That's a derived result for parallel plates. Very useful for parallel plates, but we don't have a parallel plate here. All we have is a sphere. So we have to go back to the grander definition of capacitance, which is Q over V. And the procedure to tackle these type of problems, to derive what C is, is a couple of steps. So first, we assume that there's some amount of charge on the two ends of the capacitor. Based on that charge, we find out the electric field, which leads us to find the difference in voltage. And then once we have delta V, we go C equals to Q over delta V, and then we can call it a day. The Q will cancel out, everything's gonna be fine. So let's apply that to this particular case. It looks a little tricky because we just have a simple single conductor that's a sphere. So in order for us to talk about two sides, we have to basically assume what they mean is let's take the other side of the capacitor somewhere way in infinity so that we can find out the voltage. So to do so, we assume that there's Q sitting on my sphere, which is the Earth, and somehow at way out in infinity we have negative Q, but we don't really care about that because it's way out in infinity. We find the E by Gauss's law, which of course by spherical geometry, we've done this many, many a times. The surface area of a sphere is equal to Q enclosed, which is just a Q, divided by epsilon naught. And in this case, the electric field here happens in space, so we're no, there's no dielectric to speak of. It is very close to an actual vacuum in this case, more than even the air gap. So we've seen this before. This looks just like a point charge. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q over R square. Then we find delta V by taking the integral from infinity to R. And this also we've done before, so sparing you the details, giving us 4 pi epsilon, just simply big R of the radius of the Earth. And so you take your C is equal to Q over V, and it basically becomes Q over Q over 4 pi epsilon times R, so cancel, cancel. The bottom become the bottom of the bottom becomes the top. We're no longer dependent on Q, which is typical of such approaches. To sub in the number, don't forget your R is not sixty four hundred. You have to add three more zeros because we have to convert it into meters before we get a simple farad. In terms of numbers, we get something like that, and more typically we would use prefix powers of 3, so let's say it's 712 microfarads. So this is the case for a spherical capacitor, but the same principle and steps that we've described here applies to any other geometry. It could be cylindrical, it could be irregular even, but of course we like to stick to our usual things with symmetry so we can make use of Gauss's law to find the electric field.